Hi there. This video will demonstrate how to add platforms to our 2D game, as well as how to adjust and compensate for spam jumping. So that way we can only jump and we'll be looking to see if we're colliding with a ground surface or our platforms and only allowing us to jump when we are on a platform. So that'll eliminate that spam jumping that can happen. So the previous video we talked about how to, if I play here in Unity, I use W and or A and D, sorry, the horizontal uh, movement to move the character left or right, and then how to use spacebar to jump. But the issue is right now I can spam jump, and I can jump as high as I want to in the scene. So that may be a feature and option you want to add, but we want to be able to limit that if we want to. So we have set up our uh, player movement platformer script that allows us to jump. And we're going to make our refinements to the script and within Unity in order to uh, limit that spam jumping. Before we do that, in Unity, we're going to create uh, some platforms. So let's go ahead and do that. So to add some platforms, I'm going to go in my hierarchy tab and go to the plus symbol. We'll do a 2D object. We'll do sprites. And we'll do square. We're going to rename this one platform. And uh, I'm going to go to my sorting layer. And I don't have a sorting layer for platforms. So I'm going to go to, because I can't see it. If you see it, look at it. It's behind the background and also be behind the player. So what we're going to do is create a new sorting layer with our platform. And then we're going to hit the plus symbol. And we're going to call this one platform. I'm going to say platforms. And I want this to be in front of the background but behind the player. Okay, so if the player can jump in front of it, we're not going to set that up right now, but we'll come back to that. So it's going to be right underneath the background layer and then on top of the player layer. And visually speaking, the player is going to be closer to the camera, then the platforms, then the background. All right, so let's go back to our platform object and change the sorting layer for that platform underneath additional settings to platforms. Okay, so now we can see it. Let's uh, let's do it, make it like an orange platform to work well with our kind of blue background. Make it whatever color you want to. Let's do like a three uh, for the X scale, and we'll start there. We can always make refinements to that later. I'm going to move it down here so that the player can jump on it. But before I do that, let's um, before we move it to different areas, let's do reset to put it in the center. Let's just undo that and type in 0 and 0. There you go. And then uh, additional settings, we're going to make sure we have that platform sorting layer turned on. All right. So now we have a platform. What if we want to have multiple types of platforms or multiple copies of our platform? In order to do this, we're going to create what's called a prefab. So in our assets folder, I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose create folder. I'm going to call this one oh, not folder prefab prefabs. So a prefab is an object that we can duplicate throughout our scene and still keep a hierarchy of only having to make adjustments to one of them. If I duplicated this platform I would just control D here, duplicate that a couple more times and move it around. Each one of these has its own inspector settings. So if I want to make an adjustment to the scale of one it doesn't affect all of them. So one thing I can do is create prefabs. So let's move this one out of the way so we just have one platform. And a prefab means I only have to make adjustments to one and it makes the same adjustments to all of my copies of them. So in my prefabs folder I'm going to take my platform and to create a prefab all you have to do is drag that platform down into the project tab into your prefabs folder. It changes the visual look in the hierarchy to a blue text and a blue box, blue cube, which means this is now a prefab. The other objects are not prefabs, but this platform is now a prefab. So what that means is if I duplicate this now, control D, control D, control D, each one of those are copies of this prefab that's down at the bottom. If I wanted to make sure I am adjusting the prefab, I can come in here and change the color to like a green. And in my hierarchy, I can click the back button. Uh, and then that changes all of my copies. So there's you know, one copy 
two copies, and they're all changed according to what I'm doing here. If I go select my prefab again and change the scale, let's now change the scale. It changes the scale of all of my copies of those prefabs. So let's pull that back to three. And I like that orange color, so we're gonna put it back to orange. There we go. All right, I only need one pre, uh, platform right now, but that's gonna be really good so that way I can make copies, but also adjust one and then affect all of them. Now that I have turned it into a prefab, I can then move each copy around to where I want it to be. The main reason for that is that we wanna keep the prefab as uh, the position is zero, 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 so that the anchor point or the pivot point is in the center of the composition. So I can always resort back to that if I need to. So now I can come in here and duplicate this platform prefab. Well, maybe put one over here and then duplicate that one there. So I can jump up there. Okay. So now if I go, uh, well, one last thing I gotta do is add a box collider to it. Because if I go hit play right now, I have the prefab, but there's no collision to it, right? I can jump through it, I can move through it, and that's not very successful. I wanna use a platform to get this character up to different areas. So we wanna create collisions with this. If I go back into my prefabs folder, I wanna make sure I'm making this adjustment in my prefab folder. I can double click on that. And I'm gonna add that box collider, so box collider 2D component. There we go. So that way that puts the collision around the outside of the box. And with that simple adjustment, now if I go hit play, now I can collide with that. So now I'm colliding with those colliders. Oh, I'm kind of stuck in the corner there. I can jump and land on top of my platforms. Okay. So it also shows me, hey, I probably need to move these up some. So let's take all of these and then just move them up a little so my character doesn't get stuck underneath. And then maybe I'll move this one over here. So a little bit more breathing room in between those platforms in case my character does fall in between. So we can go play test again. So if I use my A and D to move around and spacebar to jump, now I can collide with those platforms and jump up in the air. All right, so platforms are pretty easy to create. I can copy them around. I can change what they look like. I can change their scale and uh, proportion and everything. Uh, and that should be pretty easy to uh, create some more vertical motion in the scene. So I can jump and now I have a reason to jump. I have platforms to jump on top of. There is one issue though, is that really, uh, there really is no reason for me to have lower platforms right now because I can spam jump and get over here to that higher uh, platform. So I wanna reduce the means to spam jump. I wanna only have the means to jump once and then force the player to have to jump again to get up to a higher position. So I wanna reduce out the uh, spam jump ability. And here's where the adjustment in our player controller platformer script will come into play. Okay, so we need to do a couple of things both in Unity and in our script. Let's go into our script and create the adjustments that we need and then we'll come make our adjustments in Unity. Here's our player movement platformer script. So we have our uh, basic movement standpoint of speed and jump velocity already set up. We're gonna add to this so that way it will work uh, so we don't have to spam uh, click. We're not allowing for spam jumping. Right? So really what we need is to be able to detect if the player, go back and play for a second, really need to detect if the player is on the ground or not. So is the player connecting or colliding with a ground or with a platform, any other kind of surface? Right. So, uh, and then if it's colliding with a ground or platform surface, then allow the player to jump. If the player is not colliding with the ground surface, like I'm jumping in the air here and staying in the air, then we should say, don't allow the player to jump. So basically, if the player is colliding with the surface, allow it to jump. If the player is not colliding with the surface, don't allow it to jump. Okay. So that's the, the logic of what we're gonna try to do here. Uh, so we need a couple of variables. We need a new public variable, and we're gonna title this one public layer mask and that's the unity uh, layer mask that we're going to reference 
So instead of a float, that's a public layer mask. And we're going to call this one platforms layer mask. Semicolon to end that. So layer mask is a different uh, type of layer. We've talked about sorting layers. But we also have layers up here at the top, which can be used in different ways. Sorting layers are used for a visual, uh, visual differentiation of what's closer to the camera versus what's further away. We can actually use the, the basic layers to determine uh, other interactions, and that's what we're going to use here. We're going to use a basic layer uh, that we're going to name platforms uh, to determine if a character or this object is colliding with another object. All right, so we need this public layer mask, and we're going to call it platforms layer mask variable, right? This is going to give us a option in Unity to be able to add a platforms layer to determine if the object is colliding with something or not. All right, we need uh, one private variable. Actually, let's do it underneath our rigid body here. So our private rigid body variables here, we need another one, so we're going to need a private and this is going to be a box collider. So box collider 2D. And then we're going to call this one box collider 2 and then lowercase d. Semicolon. All right. So this is going to get a reference of the box collider for our player. Here's our box collider 2D component. And this private variable is going to get a reference of our box collider. Uh, and we're just creating the variable now and then in the void start we're going to return down and we're going to add box collider 2d equals and we're going to get the transform get component and we're going to use our angle brackets so transform dot get component angle bracket box collider 2d in that with another angle bracket. We're going to do open parentheses, close parentheses, and semicolon. So similar to the get component for the rigid body, we've created a variable called box collider. Let's see, we need to have that be lowercase 2d there. Box collider 2 lowercase d equals transform get component. And we're going to get this box collider component that Unity has set up, that we set up for it for the player. Right? This is actually going to be for the player. Player's box collider 2d. All right, so public layer mask, we'll add that when, when we get to Unity later. And then a private box collider variable. And then under void start, we're going to get the transform get component of that box collider 2D. All right, so we're not actually going to be changing anything with fixed update. We are going to be changing something with uh, the void update. We have to check if the key the spacebar key is pressed down and if the player is grounded or touching one of these platforms so we're going to be adjusting that in a second but before we do that we're going to come down underneath void update and we're going to add a new function and this is going to be a private function so we'll say private bool for a boolean basically this is going to be checking if something is uh, on or off and what we're checking is if the player is colliding with the platform or not so it's a yes or no so that's why we're using a boolean private bool is grounded and we're just using the word is grounded right now you could do is connected to or is colliding with platform but we can use this command in case we are want the player to collide with anything else other than just platform right now we are just going to look and see if the player is collecting colliding with a platform. So private bool is grounded. I'm going to return down and we'll do an open curly bracket and it should complete that in curly bracket for me. Alright, so our command needs to be is the player colliding with the platform? Uh, and the way we can do this is to use a ray or a line that is drawn out from one particular angle uh, to determine if this object, this player's box collision is touching another object, right? another object's collision. So for this we're using ray casting. So ray casting basically takes a, an imaginary arrow that the player is not going to see, but from a developer standpoint, imaginary arrow out in one particular direction to see if this object is going to collide with another object. 
So in our private bool is grounded, we're going to do ray cast hit 2D. And it's a capital ray and then a capital H for hit and then capital 2D, or 2 capital D. So that's the command in Unity we need to reference. Raycast hit 2D, and we're going to create a new variable for that here, uh, which is going to be just within this private bool, is grounded. And we're just going to call this one Raycast, all lowercase for Raycast, capital H for hit, 2 lowercase d. So that way we know the difference between what we're referencing from Unity and our variable that we're creating here. All right, so we're going to cast a ray from the player character's box collider, and we're really going to look at it down. So if I go back to my player, and let's play for a second, I'm really looking at it uh, from a vertical position. I need to see is the player underneath the player's box collider colliding with the platform. So that ray needs to go down. Right? So we need a box cast, a box collider, that's going to see if this object is colliding with something underneath it. And if it is, then allow the player to jump. If not, then don't allow the player to jump. All right. So raycast hit 2D is our reference, and then the variable we're creating is raycast hit 2D with the change lowercase equals. And we need to use a physics node here, so we're going to say physics 2D dot uh, box cast. Okay. So we're going to use the physics component and look at our box colliders to see if the box collider for this player is colliding with the box collider of our platform. So that's why it's called a box cast. We're going to look outward. We're going to cast this information outward from this player to see if it's colliding with something else. We're going to open parentheses. And here's where we're going to use that box collider 2D uh, variable that we've determined so far. We're going to say box collider 2D. Yep, here we go, box collider 2D dot bounds dot center. Now what we're doing here, go back into Unity, is we want to use the center of the box, which is right here in the bottom, right? Uh, and this is um, the vertical, and then we're going to come back and adjust the horizontal as well, or the size of it. So we're going to use the center of the box, box collider 2D dot bounds dot center. The next one we need to check for is the box collider 2D lowercase d. I think I'm going to have to come back and adjust that later. I'm going to choose bounds dot size. That's the horizontal size of the character of the box as well. So I'm going to go back and change this to make sure this is 2D. Box collider 2 lowercase d, that's the variable that I created here. It's trying to autocorrect it to the Unity box collider 2D. This one needs to be a capital B. There you go. So I made an adjustment up here. If you go back in the void start, our variable that we're creating is lowercase box, lower, uppercase collider to lowercase d. We are referencing the uppercase box collider 2D. Okay, so make sure we're having that. Come back and get down here. So box collider 2D bounds, which is the horizontal size. And we're going to add a float value to check with. And for this one, this first one, we just want it to be zero. So we have to type in zero, and we're going to use the letter F to note that this is going to be a float. All right, so we don't want any compensation or change of the size of our box collider. We want it to be perfect according to the size of our box here. That's looking at the box collider itself of the player character. All right, the next thing we want to add is a comma, and we're going to do vector 2, and we're going to use down, D-O-W-N. Previously, we used vector 2 up, which determines the up axis of um, the object. This one, we're going to use vector 2 down. So basically, it's going to create a ray, an imaginary line pointing down compared to the box collider. Here's where we are going to create a little bit of a compensation. Uh, we need to add another float value, so we're going to do, um, let's see, you know, 0.1 should be enough, 0.1f for float. Right. So what that is going to do is a little compensation because the player 
let's go back to our Unity page. The player is going to be colliding right on top of the platform. Right, so we want a little bit of a compensation, so that's going to be a 0.1 value difference in between our player character and the actual platform underneath that. So it's going to give us a little compensation to determine if the player is colliding with it or not. All right, the last thing we want to do is pass in do comma. I want to pass in my platform's layer mask, right, which I'm going to add to it in Unity. So basically, excuse me, basically we're going to cast the ray from the center of the object. Uh, to pair, compared to the horizontal size of the object facing downward with a 0.1 value difference to compensate and then we need to tell it what to collide with. If it's colliding with our platforms then um, allow us to jump. So do comma and then I'm going to go up here and copy this player or platform layer mask and then I'm going to paste that inside that parentheses there. Whoop, I missed one. Platform layer mask. Yep. Platforms layer mask. All right, so then it's going to check to see if a platform is added to this platform layer uh, is colliding with the player, then allow us to jump. All right, we need one more line down here. And that line is going to be a return line. Return ray cast hit 2D. That's our variable that we created that we're housing in this uh, raycast in. Dot collider. And we're going to say not equals to null. And we're going to do a semicolon. Okay, I missed the semicolon on this line right here. So the line above that, let's add a semicolon. That should correct our issues, our errors. So what this is going to do is it's going to say, well, is the player grounded? If it is not, then add null. As in, if the player is in the air, then null. Then we can't jump. If the player is grounded, then allow us to jump. Okay, so this return line is necessary to stop the player from jumping if they are in the air. So if the player is not grounded, which is what we are testing here, then don't allow the player to jump. All right? So that's our command for our isGrounded function. Now we need to call our isGrounded function in our if statement of our update. So if we look at void update, uh, I want to do if, and I'm going to start off by saying if uh, isGrounded. Okay, and we'll do open and close parentheses. I'm going to start off by saying before I even allow the player to hit the spacebar to jump, is the player grounded? Is the player touching a platform? So I say if, open parentheses, is grounded, and we're going to say and, or the ampersand symbol, ampersand twice, and, and, uh, if the space bar is pressed, then allow us to jump. We shouldn't have any errors here. So basically, we have our is grounded function that's going to determine if the player is touching a platform. And then in our if statement to determine if the player can jump, we're going to say if is the player grounded and the space bar is pressed, then jump. All right, let's hit Control S to save. All right, let's go into Unity. Let it compile. Box Collider 2D does not exist in current context. We need to make sure we have that spelled correctly on line 17. Collider 2D. Box collider 2. Oh, there it is right there. There we missed it. So back here on line 12 when we created our box collider 2D attribute, or sorry, variable, uh, this needs to be a lowercase. So box collider 2D, and that is going to be the same thing here, and then also the same thing down here. So we just needed to correct that private box collider 2D. The variable we're creating has needs to have a lowercase d. So it's not the same as this one over here. Now let's save. Go back into Unity. Let it compile. See if we have any other errors. Uh, object reference not set to an instance of an object. Okay, so uh, I think my issue with that uh, error of the object reference was because I was still in play mode. So uh, when you get out of play mode, uh, 
it cleared that error from me. So we should be good to go. Everything should be right. So now what we need to do in Unity is set up our platform layer and make sure everything is connected together. So back in Unity, uh, let's see, our platform. I'm actually going to double click on my platform prefab down here to open that up. And up at the top, there's layers. I have a couple of default layers in here, but I'm not going to use the sorting layers for this. I'm going to use a layer up at the top. And before I get to that, let's go look at our player controller script. And there's our platforms layer mask. So we don't have anything selected. Here are our layers that are created as default. So our script is working. It's not affecting the player yet because we're not determining what to collide with. So back in our platform prefab, we're going to click the drop down for layer and we're going to do add layer. Then it's going to come down here and add a new one. We'll just use the user layer six. We're going to call this one platforms. Platforms. There you go. Let's go back and double click back on our prefab. And then now under the layer drop down at the top, now we have platforms. Okay. So all of our platforms need to be assigned to our layer platforms layer. All right. So now if we go back into our scene and hit player, now down in our player script, we have platforms layer mask and we are going to change this to platforms. So it's going to check to see if the player is colliding with our platforms, which is associated with our platforms layer. And then if it is, then allow the player to jump. If not, then don't allow the player to jump. Let's test it out to see. I don't have any errors. We're good. All right, so I can use my A and D to move around. Whoop, I might need to go back because my space is not working. So let's go back to our player. It is there, platform. So let's see if we can troubleshoot for a second. Go back to our individual platform. Yep, that's on the platform layer. Okay. All right, so our issue when we play is that we actually don't have any platform on the bottom. Uh, so I can still move, but this is not technically a platform. This is just the collider for the background. So even if I try to hit spacebar, I'm no longer going to move because I'm only going to be able to jump if my player hits a platform. Um, so I could add these collisions to that, but actually it's going to be easier if I just take my platform here and I'm going to duplicate that. And we're going to zero that back out on the X and I'm going to move it down. And then we're going to scale this out. Let's try 12, okay, 22. That'll work. So scale out a platform the size of my composition down here. And we can look at our background to make sure it will collide. Yep, that works. So I just copied a platform down here. And it is going to work. We just didn't have a platform down there, so it couldn't collide with it. So we're going to hit play. It'll fall down to the bottom of the composition. Now when I can jump, it will test to see if I'm jumping on the ground or not. I can't spam jump anymore. It's only going to jump when it notices that my player is on the ground. So now I can jump over here to this one. I can try to spam jump and it's not going to work unless I am touching the ground surface. Jump over here. Jump over there. So that stops the player from being able to spam jump if you wanted it to do that. So that kind of wraps up this video of how to add platforms as well as how to adjust the timing uh, and the collisions of the player so that way the player can't spam jump. We can only jump when the player is touching the ground. Beyond that, the player is in the air, so don't allow the player to jump. All right, that'll wrap up this video.